Hey everybody and welcome back to Everything Tech and today we're taking a look at Distro 3. Before we get started, I'd like to give a big thank you to Clever Files for providing me with their pro version of their software. But if at any time you want to try out Distrill, you can just go ahead and go to cleverfiles.com. I will link this down in the description. And here you will find all of the different things that this program has to offer. If I was to cover everything, I think this video would be too long. So if you find anything here that you like or are interested in giving it a try, you can download it for free or you can upgrade. For $89, you can upgrade to the Pro version, that's one user, up to 3 max. And for an additional $29, you get lifetime upgrades. So if Distro 4 or Distro 5 come out, you can upgrade to those. And if you are an IT personnel and wish to install Distro for Mac on all your computers, for $399, you get the Enterprise version, plus free lifetime upgrades. And this program is available for Windows as well. Again, you can click on the data recovery for Windows and it will take you to the page for Windows which will show you everything that the Windows version can do. If you're interested, you can download the free version or upgrade to the Pro version. Of course, I have the 50% off Mac version cross discount which gives me 50% off, but you can download the basic one or go Pro for $89 or for $399 you get the Enterprise version. And for $19.99, you get the lifetime upgrades on the Pro version and free lifetime upgrades for the Enterprise version. Before we take a look at the program, we're going to install it, mainly because there's something before the program that shows you what's new with Distro Pro or Distro 3, whichever version you have. And we're going to just click on the Distro DMG file that we downloaded from their website, and we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop it to our applications. I already have a version of this on my computer, so I'm just going to replace it. And it should copy on over to your applications folder, which you can open up with the launch pad. And there it is. We'll go ahead and close out all these windows here. And we're going to click on open. And here we see the new disk drill. Recover, protect, visualize your data, and clean up your Mac. You can skip all of this and just click on get started, and that will launch the program. Or you can click continue, and it's going to show you the different things that this program has to offer, including a single power button, time to time is precious, locate the disk with deleted data and recover it. And I'm going to click on these. You can go ahead and pause and read through these. Or if you do happen to get the uh, program, you can read through these if you like. So we're just going to go ahead and click OK. And it shows you all the different things that this, uh, uh, this program has to offer, which of course is one of my favorites. So we're going to click on Get Started. It's going to ask you for your password, so just push that in or punch that in. And here we have Distrill. Right away, the biggest change that I'm noticing is a change in the user interface. And the reason why I like to change in the user interface is because even though most of the things that this program can do are all carried over from the previous version, the change in the user interface makes me feel like I'm using a brand new program. Now, taking a look at the user interface, here up at the top we can see it can create a bootable drive. And if we click on that, it, I think it looks for your recovery drive. And it creates a bootable recovery drive that loads it onto a, a USB drive and you can use that to back up your computer or restore your computer in case there's a problem with it. We're not going to do that now so we're just going to go ahead and go back. Here in backup you can attach non-mountable images, you can back up your your drives to a DMG file or you can import an iOS backup and figure out what you want to do with that. Here in cleanup it runs a scan which looks through all of your programs and cleans your computer or in a visual way, displays everything that is on your computer and you can decide whether you want to delete it or move it onto a hard drive or something. And we are going to go through this feature because if I'm not mistaken, this is a new feature in this program that the previous version didn't have. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But before we do, we're going to take a look at find duplicates, which I think is also a new feature. And we are going to use these two features just to see what it does. So. That's what it does and it looks for duplicates. You can add for different folders in your application folder to look for different apps or in your documents. I don't think I have enough on my computer to actually do this, but you get the idea. The newest features that I was really excited about is the cleanup feature, mainly because it aims at looking through your computer's hard drive or any drive that you choose and showing you everything that is on that disk and you can decide whether you want to delete it or not. And mostly, or oftentimes, when you run your computer for a really long time, eventually documents, cookies, web browser history starts piling up and that starts taking up memory. 
So we're going to go ahead and do this, see how this works. We're going to be doing it on Macintosh HD. And I really hope it doesn't take too much because of course this is a one terabyte hard drive. So we're going to go ahead and click scan. And I like doing all files, including hidden files, because that really shows you everything that's on your computer. Now, you want to be careful when you do this because you don't want to delete something that is crucial to your computer. So you can select different types of uh, programs here. Let me make this a little longer so we can see it. But here we can see if you want to delete certain pictures, it shows you all your pictures. Of course, I don't have much on this computer yet, mainly because I just did a fresh install. But you, it, all your stuff would show up here that like videos that you have you don't really watch or music you don't listen to you can delete from here documents that you don't need anymore or archives you can go ahead and delete that from there. So you can see this here it's already starting to populate. So we're going to go ahead and video and you can see here most of the system videos you can actually take a look at including most of these here which I don't know what they do. So I'm going to go ahead and wait till this is done and export them. And finally, we're going to take a look at the, my favorite feature, which is the recovery feature. We're going to be doing this on both my USB drive and my SD card, but we're just going to go ahead and get started. If it's the first time you do a USB or, or a recovery on a USB, it should say recovered, but since I've already done this to avoid waiting or time spent looking through the drive, it's already saying continue. So we're going to click on continue and we're going to go through our file. It does take some time depending on the size of your drive. This took about a minute or two, mainly because it's a two gigabyte drive and I didn't really have much on it, but you can choose if you want to show all your files except hidden and system ones. You can also choose whether you want all your files, including hidden and system ones. And you can see there, it goes from nine files to 40, 145 files. And you can choose whether you want to just see pictures, just video, just audio, documents, or archives course I've had pictures and video on here so that's what it found and I did take some pictures for my aunts and uncles in the past for a baptism I believe and that's why it's in Spanish so they would understand but those are the pictures it's able to recover from there but next we're gonna save our session and just and one of the features that I love the most about the recovery is the availability of one of my favorite features of the recovery is the save session button, which allows you to save your session so you can come back later. Here I have it already saved right now that I click save. So if we were to get out of this, continue using our drive and then come back, you click on the file that it created and it goes right back to it. And I believe this is in case that you format the drive or something, you can always come back here using this here and it will show you everything that it was able to recover. And you can also recover images, which I'm going to show you in just a second. I'm going to do this on my SD card, which has plenty of pictures. So we're going to click continue and we're going to go up to the photos and we can see our pictures here and go into JPEG. Of course, these are green because I've already backed up the pictures previously. But if you want to back up just a JPEG folder, you would click the little check mark with a JPEG folder and you click on choose folder and you can choose the destination of your liking. Usually I do the desktop because you can find it easier that way and then you click recover. And when you do recover, it shows here whether it was a success or a failure. All of these are a success, so that's good. And so when we click on our entitled folder, we're gonna see pictures, JPEG, and we can see all the pictures that we've taken, including this one of the Santa Monica Pier. And that's how you save an entire folder. Saving an individual picture is just as the same. You just click on the picture you want, you click on the check mark, and you do recover. I'm not gonna do this because I already have it but that's how you would do it. Now, you can also do a save session on this by clicking save session and it shows you SD card and from when it's from and you can click on save. I believe this one's gonna, t oh no, this one was instantaneous. So yeah, here's the file there. It's good to have because you can always go back. And I'm gonna try something out here that I've never tried out. I'm gonna actually eject the drive and see if I can access all the files with the save file. So I'm gonna eject this one here and eject my SD card. Now I'm going to ch click on SD card and yeah, just as I suspected, you can access your files in uh, if the drive is offline. So you're going to have to plug in your drive to access the, uh, the scan. So I'm going to plug in my SD card there. Once it's plugged in, it starts loading the session and there we go. We can see all our stuff and that's disk drill three. Most of the features that I use in disk drill three, course you can use this program and use it if 
find all these features that you can find useful, find features that you like. That's it for today, taking a look at Distro 3. Thanks to CleverFoss for providing me with this pro version of their software. Now, this is, again, one of my favorite pieces of software because I've been able to recover certain files. So if you're the type of person to delete files or you accidentally deleted something and want to go back and recover it, maybe Distro can save you. And if you want to choose to upgrade, you can visit them at distrill.com where you were able to again look at all the features it has to offer including an explanation and you can also upgrade to the pro or enterprise version if that's the sort of thing you're interested in and here's the pricing there again this will be linked down in the description and it is also available for windows so if you're running a windows machine you can download this for windows and it'll do just the same and the pricing for Windows is here, of course it's regular price 89 but for some reason it's giving me 50% off for the Mac version cross discount. Again, that's it for today, thank you all for watching and see you all in the next video.